All right, guys. My name is Dr. Shornell Wolverton Sihan. I am here with Swift Fire True TV. Super excited with our guests here tonight. And let me just triple make sure that we are actually showing up because Facebook has been acting really weird today. I don't know about you, but I was down for like a sec. And uh, while we are making sure that the settings are right, guys, if you don't mind sharing um michael and jay then we can make sure everyone is getting out and then all of you who are on if you don't mind sharing too uh i was telling these guys that we actually got shut down on youtube for a little bit so i'm probably going to be making up another channel uh, michael was telling me about how he had to and he would bounce back when stuff was going on so i'm getting all these ideas from all the techie people out there doing stuff but hey to candace lisa hey sophie michelle it's good to see you um you know i'll give it a couple minutes for people to pop on but why we are doing that uh, welcome to new guests of mine these are two really amazing people that i met in vegas and i've been i actually met uh online watching one of their um interviews with um who was it uh james rank uh regarding super soldiers i was up doing whatever and here it comes up on my feed i'm like who are these i knew i know james very well and i saw he was being interviewed by these two guys i'm like who are these guys and so you know how you go down the the rabbit hole and find out who people are and i was like oh i gotta connect with these guys and then they were at the the night when we the first night we were there in vegas we had a little dinner deal and there they were i'm like oh you guys are the people so anyway um super very honored to have both of you with us and you know just for the sake of the some people who may not be familiar i'm sure there's tons of people very familiar but I would love to hear a little bit about from each of you on your background, um, just a little bio of who you are, what you're doing, how you even got to this place where you are right now. If you just take a few minutes each to do that before we kind of jump in here, go ahead and start, Michael. Yeah, so my background is I was in the Navy SEAL teams for uh, 24 years, SEAL Team 6, uh, did, you know, combat action as a SEAL and uh, had, had many great experiences, started the Navy SEALs first hand-to-hand -hand program and uh, lots of great stuff. Then I went into uh, the CIA, uh, worked at the CIA for uh, approximately 11 years, Sunday terrorist. Uh, everyone's familiar with uh, Osama bin Laden, so I was uh, instrumental in helping find him. And uh, then my old SEAL team, six um, compadres came in, uh, it was Red Squadron and, and took him down while I was in and country standing by to help them if needed to get them across the border in case uh, the Pakistanis got a little uh, pissed off at what, what was happening, somehow brought them down. But fortunately, they made it back in Afghanistan and, you know, the rest is history. So that's that's kind of me in a nutshell. Jay and I met, um, you know, about a year ago, uh, saw one of my videos that, hey, you want to come on the show? And then we've done it. We did several shows and now we're doing the optimized drive. So having a great time revealing. Uh, it's been, been a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask how you guys hooked up and like, because I've seen several videos with you guys now and mm -hmm. such a good chemistry, what you have going, it works really well. And that's, that's always cool when you can find someone that you connect with and collaborate, bounce off ideas and like you get stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. So tell us a little bit about you, Jay. I know your background, a little bit of fitness and health which i'm love all of that not you know michael obviously is getting good health too um but i think we all have that in common of just like health and fitness and give us a little bit of your of your background sure and i apologize i just got off a podcast and my uh podcast is processing in the background so if you guys hear unfortunately a distractional sound that's from me it'll end in about a minute um, so my background is <clears throat> I have written the world's uh, two most or highest sold books on hormone optimization, uh, the testosterone optimization therapy Bible. And then my first book, which was called the, uh, the I can't even remember what it was called, the testosterone, um, the therapeutic manual or the TRT, the TRT manual. I can't even remember. It was back in 2014. Uh, and then subsequently, I wrote a bunch of other books on fasting and holistic health and stuff like that. And all of them 
are massive, you know, bestsellers on Amazon. For I'm a four-time international bestseller author on uh, Amazon. But uh, as Michael and I met last year, my real jam is spirituality and consciousness. And I've always been a you know massive seeker. Uh, I've read all literally over 1,500 books on the esoteric in my life. And I am blessed to have a really awesome, nearly photographic recall memory of all of those books. So when Michael and I, you know, connected, like he said, a year ago, it was just the chemistry. We were very, you know, personalities were very magnanimous. And it was just kind of like, dude, we're going to work together. And Michael's like, well, how do you figure? And I go, I don't know. It'll just come to me. And then one day he sent me a message in October of last year. And he's like, I'm ready. And I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? He's like, let's go. We're going to work together. And then literally in a month, we put together the optimized tribe and the rest is history. You know, we have nearly 2000 people in our group, uh, all of which are some of the most amazing, high conscious, highest vibration people on the planet. And it's just a total blessing to work with Michael and obviously to meet you, people like you, Dr. Charnel. I mean, it seems like Michael could tell you every week we interview some of the most courageous and amazing people on the planet. I mean, I go to bed sometimes at night and I just like look up at the sky and I'm just kind of like, my, this is such a blessing. I mean, as Michael can tell you last week, we had Juan, Larry Gators and Shane Bales in a matter of five days. And it was some of the most prodigious, prolific information you could ever get from three separate personalities. And we just, I mean, it's just a blessing. I mean, to be able to put out that kind of information and, you know, literally to have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people indirectly hear it and see it, it's just a blessing. So I, I'm privileged to be here with you today with both of you, of course. Well, you guys are definitely reaching a, a big group of people and I'm sure you're seeing some great effects one question I would have for both of you, um, you know, in the middle of this, like, quote, wake up and what are we are like a year in now with, you know, this situation, um, you know, there's days I know I have like my ups and downs and then I'm like, yay, this is going to be great. And then it's like, OK, this sucks. And, you know, <laughs> feeling the pain and thank God I have really great people you know, like yourself that we can call every now and then and just go, what the hell? And, you know, have someone, because you don't want to be like a wreck live as a leader, you know, out there, but then there's also that piece where you're just being real too. And, you know, the balance of letting people not just see all the fun, happy, high vibe stuff, but actually the real, the real thing, you know, the human thing. Um, but what, are you guys seeing any wake ups to, you know, um, to like, even like in the last few months, because, you know, I guess it's most of the people that are following, um, a lot of them have been following this whole time and they're just like, you know, it's either like black or white they're in, they've been in the whole time. And I'm starting to see a little bit of trickle of like some secret, followers that may be starting to talk a little bit or kind of crack in the door a little bit. And that really gives me hope and encouragement to say like, Oh my God, please tell me that something that we're doing is actually working a little bit. Um, but I would love to get your feedback in your world of what kind of responses you guys are getting from people. So, so what I'm seeing on the, uh, the military side and the CIA side, a lot of this stuff, you know, I, I see something and then I remote view it and then I get uh, insights from from uh, what I'm seeing. Today I talked to uh, James Gilliland and then I talked to uh, um, Taro by Janine and all three of us were seeing similar things where the military is, is really close to uh, and not just the U.S. military, but the militaries of the world are getting ready to uh, to move. They're already moving right now on that uh, that one um, cargo ship. Uh, they're starting to uh, take action, haven't taken action on that. Uh, military, Russia's involved. Uh, we're seeing uh, France, UK. Uh, so it's not just the US. Everybody was thinking the US was going to make this massive move and then we're going to go around and free the rest of the world. No. Militaries all over the world have been involved in this for a long time. Uh, we've known that there's a deep, dark industrial military complex uh, and there's been a movement to take them down for a long time. Uh, it's been gaining momentum over the last uh, several decades. And now we're coming to the head uh, where this thing really turns around. So a lot of people seeing uh, military movements uh, that are seeing, that are pointing to this, uh, this, this massive takedown of the deep state. 
course, when we reveal too much, you know, it gives them some insight. So they watch us and, uh, and see what we're saying. So uh, that's, that's why a lot of us get, uh, you know, shut down. And uh, because they're, you know, oh, you went too far. You gave too much information out there. We got to shut you down. But on the other side of that, they, they listen to us. And they, they learn uh, where things are moving. So there's lots of, there's both, there's a give and take on both sides. So yeah, I think there's a, a massive movement right now. We've talked about this several times. It was going to, it was going to you know, take place. But, uh, you know, is this going to be the one? Well, everyone I'm talking to, we're seeing the movements. And uh, it seems to be really taking, taking, uh, gain, gaining a lot of momentum right now. Awesome. How about you, Jay? So I would say um, without putting like, you know, timelines or anything like that on it, you know, one of the things that has really resonated with our audience and, you know, the people that Michael and I speak to on a regular basis. And by the way, Michael is prolific. I mean, to be able to do like three or four videos every day of his life, like he does is insane. I, I can't do that. I mean, there's no way my brain wouldn't uh, keep it up. So props to him. But, um, you know, to me, this is all about consciousness. Okay. And if you guys can see on the wall, you know, the Dr. Hawkins uh, map of consciousness behind me, I'll just give it the hundred monkey syndrome. You know, Michael and I talk about this all the time. And by the way, uh, FYI for your listeners, Michael and I have a PDF that we did back in December that we just published yesterday, which is phenomenal talking about this. But people um, across the planet right now, more about like who's going to win in the battle between good and evil. It's about getting more people to that level of what I would say, Hawkins would say 350 to 400 on the consciousness scale, where it's a mass wake up. And I think a lot of your listeners, I know you three are, are familiar with the hundred monkey principle, which is it just, we just need literally 10% of people to be here and this, everything ends because the sheeple, the unaware, the unawakened or whatever, just massively wake up one day and all of this ends and there's no more divide and conquer duality. There's no more Republicans versus Democrats right? There's no, there's just no more of the stuff that people have been put in the sandbox for their whole life. And it's more about like people saying, holy shit, like, how are we going to fix this? How are we all going to come together? You know, almost in a hive mind where everything is about unity. It, it, you know, and I, so I see that, you know, Michael's talking about like, you know, the military might be involved, you know, instead of me saying, and I agree, but you know, saying that, you know, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. I just say every day I see more people wake up. You know, Michael and I have people emailing us, I mean, beyond all comprehension every day asking about things and it's clear that they're waking up, you know, and they may be at a point where they're far away from us three, right? We've been at this game for so long, but it doesn't matter because that's the 100th monkey syndrome or effect where so many people now are just massively awakening. And even though they have no answers to anything, they know that the scam of the matrix is, is unraveling or if not eroding completely. And so I think personally that we're within the next year, I think everybody wakes up. The question really is what happens when enough people wake up? That's really, I think the biggest question. Well, I can say like yesterday, for example, I went to a couple of medical places and as a, I'm a doctor and but was making some appointments and went to one place and my viewers have heard me talk about this one place that I went where there's a lady who's medical with the double mask, the shield, the gloves. She's using tongs to hand me a pen, like the whole thing. So I see her again yesterday. I see her weekly and um, she's actually had just had her, uh, you know, her Easter uh, time. And I was like, Oh, did you go out of town or what'd you do? And she went to Charleston and she was like, I said, oh, well, you got family there or whatever. And she's like, um, no, um, I just went for X, Y, Z. And she's like, I'm thinking about moving there because they had a sign when you came in Charleston and it said like, you know, no littering. It was so clean. And I'm like, OK, I got that part. And the next piece was and also they're like super, you know, rigid with the masks. And there's like a thousand dollar fine. And, you know, everyone is doing it. And if you don't, you know, so this is like a selling point for her. This is actually like, you know, so I left going like, oh, my God, you know, like super kind of bummed, you know, trying to navigate through. Like, it's so sad to hear that someone's actually that afraid that they want to move 
to be in a commune where everyone was going to wear the masks and to mandate, I mean, to put it, you know, enforce it like that. But also on leaving, I went to another appointment and saw another medical person who actually was like, she came in, I had some paperwork and of course I wasn't wearing a mask or doing anything. And there is a mandate here, but I don't care. I'm not going to do it. And so she came over and like squatted next to me. And I, I just felt like she was probably going to be like, Hey, can you put your mask on? But uh, she didn't. She's actually like, Hey, here's some other paperwork. And then she got me in another room and um, I actually uh, had a good one-on-one -on -one conversation. And then she said something like, you know, I wish, I think there's a lot of people that think like me and you. She just said it out loud, like knowing, I guess, that there was a door open because I'm the only one not wearing a mask in the whole building. Um, she's like, you know, I think there's a lot of people that think like me and you. It's just that so many people won't say anything. And I said to her, well, I'm not, a, I'm not worried about saying anything. I'm like, I guess you're talking about the mask situation. And I was like, I definitely don't have a problem. I was like, look at me. Do, you, do I look like I have a problem saying anything or doing anything? Like, cause that's the thing. It's not just saying something, but doing something. And so that was, you know, I ended up giving her my website and she was asking all kinds of questions. And that was actually, I left going, okay, I feel kind of encouraged and a little bit like on a high note for the end of the day. But, um, you know, I guess, you know, I, I watched something on television last night and, and it, trying to not think about all this was, you know, doing a little, like, let's look at something else for a minute. And then I get on the show and literally they're in their cars on TV wearing a mask. And I'm like, I, I can't even watch a TV show because it like pisses me off. But um, so I don't know. I'm seeing some, you know, a couple other people who've come in and been like, oh, do you know who Mike Adams is? This lady who's like a friend of my mom's. And I was like, actually, yeah, he's super great. And she's like, yeah, I've been kind of following him and I was just like is this a whispering conversation you know you could say it out loud and but it was someone that I never would have expected right. to you know so that's encouraging um I know Jay you were just on an, an interview and got some really cool scoop so do tell us like yeah. what tell us you I think Michael wants to know too like what is, who did you interview please please, please. <laughs> so, uh, so Leo Zagami, who Michael and I know very well, who's been in our in our group, the Optimized Tribe. Okay, uh, Michael has all of his books. I mean, this guy is a he's written twenty books, by the way, um, on everything on essentially understanding the esoteric. I mean, Michael knows until I read Brad Olson's book, which is Beyond Esoteric, and Brian I Olson. Yeah, Brad Olson. So oh, Brad, Brad. Brad Olson, yeah, Brad Olson is the publisher of Leo's books in the United States. Leo is an Italian national who has had like his books actually written in a number of languages, including J Japanese and English. But Brad Olson was the guy that got Leo's books published in the in the USA is, uh, starting in 2014. But Brad and I and Michael are all you know close friends, and you know we were at a conference. Um, in Vegas, actually, what Michael three weeks ago now? God, time is oh, flying. yeah, yeah, because I was trying to reach you guys and you well, were on it's like a lifetime almost, it, yeah. literally. It's just so, Brad, you yeah. know, I was, I was so tell me, I'm gonna write what's Leo's last name. I'm gonna write it down. It's okay, Zagami Z A G A M I. But uh, Brad was at his you know, signing books at his you know, table at the seminar, and him and I got into a conversation. Yeah, Brad's. I got beyond esoteric. Anyway, um, he's like, dude, I want you to read. Else here. <laughs> I want you to read Leo's book as soon as possible, and then read my book after. So you know, he gave me that one. He gave me that one, and I read the Invisible Master, and I could not put it down. By the way, I mean, I was texting Michael saying, "Dude, are you serious?" I mean, it, it's just so good, and I finished Brad's book now too. So I'm, you know, I read pretty prolifically, but in like the, in, in a two week period, I blew through all of them. I took all these notes. I highlighted it. You know, they both sent me thankfully, graciously their PDFs so I could prepare to, to have my conversations with them. And, 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 and again, as I told you guys, when I got on the show, like Leo dropped so many bombs in a period of an hour and 22 minutes. Cause I can see it right now. It outputted that it, it's, I mean, it's almost like if I put this out, a lot of people in the truth community are going to probably ask that it gets deleted because he exposed a lot of people. Now I'm not going to name names because that's not our deal, but this is a guy who has proof of everything. Okay. I will say this, that he says that Alex Jones is not a disinformer. 
and yeah. that he has proof that Alex Jones is legit. Yeah, well, his scalar waves are amazing. Right. Like, there were scalar waves that um, some friends of mine did testing on him. He was like off the chart. Matter of fact, uh, I'll say this, 400 and above, like you're looking at that chart. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of them, which actually came back in the 540s, which is love. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is yeah. it on Hawkins? Is it yeah, 540? Exactly right. 540. 500s love, 540s are unconditional love. Exactly. He actually in philanthropy relationships um, and several across the board was was honest love that he had. And, and I was, you know, because he has that aggressive whatever. And there's been all kinds of stuff that people have said. And then I'm like, dang, yeah. like, he is like straight up amazing. It's funny you're talking about that because there's people that watch me and Michael and then follow us and stuff like that. And they send me emails every now and then like emotional release and they do charts on me and Michael from our photos online. And actually I got one last night and I usually just delete it. You know, I mean, I, I, it's flattery, but you know, they're like Michael Jaco and Jay Campbell, they have our charts and they say that we're between 460 and 525 the majority of the day this is just i won't say this person's name because i don't want to get her in trouble or whatever but it's funny i'll send it to you michael but she said it to me last night for anyway, scaler? Guys, you what for scaler yeah it's scaler exactly yeah, it's me a woman too. in the uk I'm in the late i'm like 475 to 540 on the on most everything yeah. but I think so anyway, so you know. back to what you asked me. So Leo dropped so many wisdom bombs and he just basically said that, you know, to culminate it with now, he said, look, this is a massive 2000 year conspiracy that is now all unwinding, you know, unpacking. It's spiritual, it's physical, it's meta. I mean, uh, what did he say? He said it's physical, metaphysical and spiritual. So again, we're dealing with interdimensional entities, puppets behind the you know veil, we're dealing with us as physical beings, obviously as you know, spirit beings having a physical experience, uh, and it's all just elaborate, you know, essentially elaborately unwinding, and we're all here to experience it. And you know, Leo is a very uh, cut and dry, you know, intellectual left left brainer, but very spiritual. And you know, at the very end of the book, he talks about the illumination and the aspect of Christ consciousness and how that's where we all have to get to. Again, everything always ties back into raising our vibration. To becoming collectively unified through our souls right yes. um but it's like he he basically said that it's going to be very interesting over the next two years and i'll just tell you guys that his his culmination of the podcast was that we only have nine years left he said that by 2030 if we do not unify collectively consciously the human race is extinct because we will become transhumanist satanic you know, whatever they want, right. The, the, the transgender satanic combination, the spiritual, you know, what, what are they, I call them uh, Autobots. They want mankind merged into machine, you know, Peter Diamandis, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ray Kurzweil. They talk about the singularity and, and by the way, it's, you know, it's same shit singularity. 2031 is what Ray's Kurzweil prediction is. Mm -hmm. So as Michael knows in all of the archangel books from Diana Cooper, she says that the, uh, golden age starts between 2030 and 2032 and through all of her channeling and all of her connections to, and, you know, through the archangel connection stuff that she has and her books are also fantastic. So we're, I think we all are seeing it guys. I mean, in that timeline, it's up to us to come together or it's, it's, we're done. Another reboot, another Atlantis. Wow. Wow. Any comments, Michael? Yeah, I've, I've seen that uh, we do hit the golden age, uh, but we do go through, you know, the period of awakening like we're going through right now. The uh, the, the awakening, I think they're they're extending it because uh, if it were to happen, if it were to have happened like a couple months ago, I think a lot of people would have been drugged into the streets and would have been like I a, would. yeah, a French Revolution style. And Jay and I have talked about this, you know, I, I do these remote viewings and I see stuff. And I'm like, I see this stuff coming, you know, and then uh, I, I've seen over this last uh, few months that that timeline has pretty much dissipated to the point where that's not going to happen. It might happen in some places, depending on when they bring it out and depending on what they reveal. So the revealing is going to be the key, yeah. the amount to reveal. Now, when I did uh, Tarot by Janine uh, a little over an hour ago, we talked about this and she brought up that 
there will be a reveal, but they have been purposefully holding it back because of this, knowing that it would be uh, people would be like a French Revolution thing where, you know, they annihilated the uh, the, you know, elite. And then they have all these palaces and stuff. They don't know what to do with them. And then they basically end up selling them back to the elite. And the thing starts again. You know, the same process starts again. So that's another thing they want to make sure that we have 1000 years of uh, peace and prosperity type uh, situation, golden age. And one of the ra ways they're doing that is to extend this a little longer, like, you know, we're talking about nine years. Think of nine years in uh, the level of consciousness, you know, for humanity. You know, right. of course, it's not going to be at nine year point. Boom, everything's revealed. Everything goes beautiful. It's going to be a process all the way to that point. That's beautiful. Well, we just had I have one on last week, too. And the, that got booted off of Facebook, but uh, and uh, YouTube, too. But um, one of the things that I kept trying to really get them to answer is, you know, some sort of action plan on our part. And, you know, several times I, you know, how he talks, he just gets in all these like stories and fun things. And it's just yeah. like answered the question, you know, but for me, um, I, I like prayer and I love like meditations and, you know, all of those things. But I'm also, I've been saying for the last year, like action you know, being God and action and, you know, God is in ourselves and, you know, faith without works is dead. And like, what are we personally doing? And so in the midst of all of this, you know, what I've been actually really connecting to a lady named Emily Reynolds, who was there in Vegas with us. And then there's another guy, Paul Pablo. And I don't know if you've seen anything on him or Chris Sky. But these guys are not messing around with, with what they're doing when they go out. They're just like they know their rights. They're talking about their rights. They're being very vocal about it. You know, Emily, she was there that first night we were there. She actually has a folder. I've talked about this many times on my show where but she'll get, um, you know, all her legal stuff. And then at the end, she has a big fat like sleeve full of documents. And basically, if people don't let her in without a mask and don't serve her, She'll get out of form and she'll, she's like, you know, turning them in um, for a legal action discrimination. And she said that she's not, you know, she never had to actually file one because people will cave once they get to, you know, where's your, what's your address and your name. And then they're like, wait, what? And so people, you know, I think people don't like confrontation. Otherwise right. that's why they're not doing the masks and stuff. So if you push back and I really feel like if a year ago, you know, and this is just my opinion. I think at the beginning of the two week time, people were like, oh, OK, two weeks off. We can, you know, mow the grass and do some things at home. And like, sure, we'll take a couple of weeks to vacay. And, you know, it was like almost a fun thing. We're like, oh, we're all at home and just can watch Netflix. And, you know, and then it turned into four weeks, you know, and people were like, oh, OK. Uh, but by then, I think, you know, we're I know for me, a lot of us were like, okay, this is screwed up and we better be careful. You know, this is not cool. Like this is going to yeah. go really south. And most of us were like right away there. But, you know, for whatever reason, I think it just like, I think if we did, if we would have said something then and everyone stood up and was like, no, not four weeks, no masks this and no, we're not wearing it. Then maybe we'd be in a different place, you know, now if we had pushed back, but because it's been so long, I, it just still surprises me that people aren't actually like going, Oh gosh, it has been a year. And I wonder why. And like asking those questions and, yep. but, but so two questions each, um, number one, what do you see? What can you tell us to do for action as far as boundaries, um, action plans? Um, well, and then I'll ask the second question. Let me get to that one first, but I would love to hear what you say that you're telling people in the midst of all this. Yeah, we're we're both saying we're pretty much on the same sheet of music as far as this is concerned. It's to to push those boundaries as far as you can. That's that's your responsibility, really, as a human being at this point, uh, to help other people. You know, wake up. And uh, if if you're awake and you do nothing, then you're you're really part of the problem at this point. So yeah, people are starting to go. Uh, yeah, it's been a year. That seems a little strange now. You know, that was supposed to be just two weeks, right? And so now. Here a year later, we're like, uh, people are going, oh, yeah, this is getting ridiculous. Of course, many of us have already been pushing this envelope. Uh, you do it well. 
Jay does it amazingly. I do it to a certain extent, and then I'm like, you know, I, you, you didn't get it, so I'm just going to work around you. So uh, that's kind of the way I, I take this. But, uh, you know, we're all out there on our channels uh, and, and promoting, you know, this awareness that people need to start taking on. There has to be – now, when you push these boundaries, you have to know what your legal boundaries, just like, you know, you described with that one woman's beautiful case right. – you know, uh, you have to know just how far you can push this. Now, if you're in an establishment and they tell you you're trespassing, uh, you have to leave. Pretty much you better leave because then you can be arrested if you don't. Because trespassing is a, uh, a, a law. When, so, when you're in a, you might think it's a public establishment and you have the right to go wherever the public goes. But it's not like a city park. It's like you're in a building oftentimes that someone owns corporations right and, uh, or whatever and if they say this is the way we want to mandate our our because jay and i were just in florida not too long ago and uh, in a hyatt and uh you know florida has no mass mandate but the hyatt does they'll, they'll enforce that thing big time so uh you know the corporation can do what they want and they can't because it's their establishment so if they want you to wear a mask they want you to put on gloves when you go get your meal or you know at the the buffet then you do that. Otherwise you have to leave or then they can go, okay, not only do you have to leave, but you have to like pack up your bags and get out. And so we don't want to do that. We push as far as we can, but that's, that's what we're doing. Beautiful. That's what you do. Yeah. I mean, I don't have much to add, you know, uh, as Michael said, you have to understand the law yourself if you're going to get into it with them. And by the way, we, Michael and I have asked Chris guy, that's not his real last name to come on. Uh, you know, because we've both seen his uh, his videos that he's made in the Canadian border at the uh, at customs, oh, and, yeah. and yeah, and it's amazing. And 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 by the way, you know, Michael knows I've I've got two stories too. I've gotten into it with people, and they turned around because they just don't know what they're talking about. You know, uh, when they come up to you and they say, "I'm just enforcing the law," if you say back to them, "Actually, you're miscommunicating to me," I'm you know I'm you know, and again in a tone calm very neutral observer demeanor. Listen, I just want you to do a better job in communicating to people like me. You're not enforcing a law. You're enforcing an edict from the governor of your state. There's a clear discernible difference between a law and an edict. And then, you know, you say, do you understand what I'm saying? You know? And so when you turn it around on the quote unquote, you know, order pushers or, you know, the authority figures, most of the time, as Michael knows, um, and Dr. Charnel, I'm sure you do too. They don't have any idea. They're being trained on what to say, right? So it's like they, if you, again, do it tactfully, there's a very easy way to get out of it. Like Chris Guy does in his very, you know, very uh, public, public videos now, but you have to know what you're saying. And you also have to not become emotionally reactive. You have to be very calm and very, very tone in your conversation. Very, very, yeah. very point. Well, well, also to just to address like part one of what you said too. And, and again, this is why Michael and I have so many people who follow us is that, you know, we tell you that your goal is this, because at the end of the day, mm. more of us ends this tyranny. And so what can you control, right? Your words, your thoughts, and your actions. Beautiful. So those three things that you control is going to, again, because as Michael knows, right? I mean, you know, in our PDF, you talked about Yeshua slash Jesus, what he said. And all we have to do is just be a resonant frequency for ourselves, And that washes across everybody else that comes into your, into your uh, energy field. It's literally that simple. So instead of being that guy who's like going to go out there and proselytize, hey, you sheep wearing masks in the bright sunlight, you know, you're just the person who maintains a resonant frequency at all times. And that in and of itself will bring the vibration of, of everybody. And again, it'll take time. Michael said it very right. It's a process. It's not happening instantly. But again, at the end of the day, when people ask me like, what are you doing? I'm like, I am being love and I am being light and I am accepting and allowing all the people who are in dissonance in my field without becoming dissonant like them. Make sense? Oh yeah. Beautiful. That's really good because I think if we get into that whole judgmental um, place of like, Oh, I told you, or I know more than you, or, you know, that kind of critical, you know, the energy of that is not good. And it's definitely not um, 
at the 540. You know, it's definitely not. And which, by the way, Jesus is a thousand in every yep. category across the board, mm -hmm. which, you know, so you want to talk about scalar waves. Um, he's definitely someone that you, you know, I look up to to try to um, jump in on, on being at that level. But um, so going back to kind of what you were saying towards the end, this was actually going to be my second question. Um, for me as a naturopath and also just like in service and truth lover and people lover, animal lover, you know, awesome. I'm doing things on the inside too, because obviously we're all in process and, you know, there are things externally that have happened over the last year that have the opportunity to trigger, you know, things within um, each of us. And even though we're on a show and doing you know, whatever we are doing as leaders um, or as just people, you know, that we have our days too. And so for me, um, I'm doing all the things I can, you know, drinking water, getting outside. I saw Michael, you guys were in um, Mount Shasta, which is one of my favorite places to go, you know, try to get by the beach and by the ocean and eat well. And, you know, I think one of the biggest um, plots, I guess, um, that really could have that did work in many ways is getting people quarantined. So if they're quarantined, they're, you know, that six foot, eight foot apart, you know, that's the direct biofield that we are walking in. Um, you know, no touch, no contact, contact, um, which changes chemistry and the field. And then also, um, you know, people are at home depressed, drinking, you know, doing drugs, beating their wife, you know, beating their kids, whatever. I mean, I, I just know because as a, as a doctor doing almost everything online now, um, that's what the stuff, I mean, suicide. I just had two more this, this week that, um, patients, um, family members, uh, have passed and just so, and nursing home people just totally not, I'm not even able to see my own grandmother for the last year unless I get the jab. So, I mean, there's just so much going on, right? And so for me, doing all the things that are going to nurture me as a person so I can keep that vibration and so I can actually be somewhat of maybe a good resonance, you know, out there. But I would love to hear, you know, what are you guys doing to just keep yourself sane in the, in the middle of what you're doing, you know, besides your service, which I know is very energetic for all of us to just be able to therapeutically get out here and talk and feel like we're helping at least one person. But I'd love for you to share a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, just like, uh, you know, Jay was talking about, it keeps pointing to the map of consciousness, keeping your vibration high. When I was in <clears throat> the SEAL teams and CIA, I would see people that would get freaked out and, um, you know, go in fear and anger. A lot, of a lot of times, you know, those people ended up dying in combat um, uh, pre pretty consistently, actually. Wow. And uh, so I learned, you know, through observation and having been trained really well to stay in that those higher levels of consciousness. So it's applied itself to my life now. So now that we're in basically another war where, you know, the Fourth Reich is ruling right now. So now that we're in that, uh, keeping our vibration high is the thing that defeats that not going after them, you know, physically. And that's one of the things I learned in combat. I was more effective as a spiritual warrior, you know, sending out these love vibrations and changing the environment, changing those people that were, you know, a threat to us and bringing their level of consciousness to a level where either they changed or they become vulnerable, they became vulnerable and they were, they were removed. So keeping your consciousness high is the thing that I, you know, work constantly on. I know that if I do drop below that, I'm completely vulnerable myself. So that's that's one thing that, you know, I, I've learned, uh, you know, from watching, unfortunately, a lot of people perish because they didn't. Uh, where I believe we're seeing people perishing now uh, in this, this environment because of things that are being implemented against us right now that are, you know, very, very caustic. And if, and if you get you're in those fear states and you run to that thing that you think is going to cure you, maybe not so much. So stay in those higher, higher vibrational consciousness realms and you can see through this intuitively. You'll know what's good, what's right for you. And I, I've been doing that for so many years that I can't imagine doing anything else. 
Dr. Chanel, I mean, honestly, man, that's why Michael and I are so connected. You know, I have so much love for him because he is such a vulnerable person, a powerful, you know, ex US Navy SEAL, total alpha male. But he can be that in touch with his, you know, divine feminine side and say that, you know, and, and be open to admit that, like, hey, man, I can drop in frequency and be pulled into it too. And one of the things that really resonated with him or for me when I first started talking to him, and it's a funny backstory I won't get into and how him and I connected through Facebook, but a person that I mentored for a long time randomly saw one of his Facebook videos and he was like, dude, this guy's your twin or something. You need to reach out to him. So <laughs> it's pretty amazing. But, uh, you know, in truth, that's, that's it, man. Like you have to be as a man today connected to the divine feminine mm -hmm. and not enough men today are connected to the creation frequency of the divine feminine. And both him and I are, and it's like such a cathartic, profound realization to know that like, if you just act like a, 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 a powerful mother, you know, with that creator effect who, who nurtures and loves all of her children and is so concerned about that and, and not act like, you know, the training that Michael and I have is being like, you know, ex athletes, alpha males, he's a Navy SEAL, you know, the type of guys like, you know, if you cut us off in traffic, we're going to pull over and pull you out of the car and beat you to death. <laughs> So like not being those guys and right. Michael and I are very physically impressive people, but not being those guys and being recognizing that, you know, you don't have to be that way, that you can literally send love to everyone, even the people that are like out to get you. Cause Michael and I are being attacked a lot in the last two weeks and we, it doesn't even bother us because we don't care because we know we're staying right here through it all. And we're doing our, or as I say, we're serving our highest and best and everybody that we work with. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. So getting caught up in like, you know, who's going to win in the battle between good and evil. I will just say, Dr. Charnel, honestly, we all know in our soul that good wins over dark always and forever. You know, every Star Wars movie ended with the good guys winning. I love it. And so that that's the reality of living in the third dimensional construct, whatever this is. And knowing that deep down, like as long as I continue to serve at my highest and best capacity and whatever it is I do, whether I dig ditches, am a janitor, am Michael Jaco, am a naturopath, as long as you do it to your highest and best in the service of creation, as our good friend Max Egan would say, everything's going to work out perfectly. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I think, you know, going back to the whole like, alcohol drugs you know those kind of things cigarettes vaping weed on a scalar that's a 10. Yeah. so you know if we're trying to maintain any kind of residence you only get what you are exactly. and the field radiates out they call it a biofield because it's dual it radiates out but it mm -hmm. also magnetizes back in so if you are in critic you know in critical opinionated you know, upset, judgmental, guess what? You put it out and you're going to get it right back, you know, just as quick. And things are getting so fast. It's like used mm -hmm. to be weeks or months or years. And now it's like almost instant how fast mm -hmm. things are happening. Um, so paying attention for me, um, you know, what I'm eating, what I'm drinking, you know, not like vegging out on carbs or, you know, the, the things that I personally can't do. And I'm saying that there's people out there who could do that or not do that. But for me, um, you know, just eating a real clean diet, staying hydrated, you know, doing all the vibe, high vibe things that um, crystals and essential oils and earthing and, you know, everything we can to, yeah, there you go. So we're definitely got on, his on too. Yeah. Everybody's got it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna have to send you. I'm gonna send you. I have a card deck of like crystals, oils, and uh, decrees. I created this. That's and awesome. then I'll send you my book since you guys are like readers. Um, yeah, yeah. Too. Goes into the quantum physics of um, yeah, changing the field, changing the patterns. Um, but you know, I'm not a bestseller, you know, whatever J four time, you know, Mr. <laughs> the people have stuff that I laugh and I go, I don't care about any of that yeah. stuff now. It's all about consciousness. Yeah, but that means you've helped a lot of people. That means you look sure. at all the people you're affecting and helping and you know, bring in so, up. But so are you. you, so are you. We all are. It's again, we're all stepping on the shoulders of each other. It's that now again, that cosmic awareness of all of us are for the mm -hmm. same focus. 
Yeah. And, you know, I, I love seeing uh, strong women like yourself because, you know, we we help women as well as men, you know, to raise their consciousness. It's uh, I think it's easier for women to they're already naturally intuitive. Yes. Have their consciousness raised. But learning how to be strong with that, you know, being, uh, you know, like almost like a warrior with that that energy. It's it's beautiful when women really connect with that. And uh, I think that's the I think women are, are what are really raising this. The that's right, Michael. Because they're the ones that are really getting this. Dr. Shorto, I'd say 70. They knew that the women were going to be, you know, their their downfall. And that's that's the thing that's changing. Well, that's why they had the dark side attack. Michael's right. The dark side attacked the women. OK, the whole feminism movement. And I might get in trouble here. The whole feminism movement was actually a scam to pull women from their true divine creative power. It was to pull them into the workforce to be another tax paying citizen. And all of the other stuff that they told women it was for was just made up. And so now you've destroyed the nuclear family. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. talking about the fake war and then exactly. they come out with the cartoon of Wonder Woman. Yes. To make, so everyone is out there, you know, what's the what's exactly. other lady? I'm the same as a man. I deserve everything. It's all, it was all created by the deep state. Everything is the illusion that they did. I mean, again, when you took women away from the home and you took women away from their power source, which was, hey, the women are the creative force. The women kept the family in balance. The woman kept the husband who was working during the day from going crazy. The woman, you know, fed the children, got them off to school, kept the house, you know, the hearth, the where it needed to be. All of that has been destroyed or dysregulated, however you want to call it. And so now everybody, men and women are just confused. And that's why men are so weak. You know, you want to talk about health and all the things that I'm an expert at. Why do you think there's so many emasculated men? Because men have lost their power because women think that they're supposed to be the man. And so the man is like, oh, I don't even know how to talk to my wife anymore. Instead of saying, hey, hey, honey, we're going out to steak tonight. Honey, where, what do you want to do tonight? Yeah, so, so, I mean, like literally everything has been inverted as far as like the traditional roles of divine feminine, divine masculine. And so the whole system is broken. And, you know, we could talk about it if you want, but I mean- you know this as a naturopath. I mean, they're attacking us from every single angle, from the air that we breathe, the food that we eat, the water in the plastic bottles that we drink out of, the blue light that they're radiating our bodies. I mean, it's just an all full-scale onslaught and war to destroy us, to get rid of divine human beings. Well, two things I want to jump in is, um, number one, my daughter is pregnant with my first grandbaby and she is super, she's married to a ranger who's special. And, um, so she, you know, when I went through my, my pregnancies, I was just like, there was a lot of pressure to go back to work or whatever. And then once sure. I was pregnant, I mean, I never thought I would be that person that wanted to stay at home because the programming, you know, and, and she just had this conversation with me just this week of like, some of even the shame um, of people trying to put things on her for like not wanting to go back to her job necessarily or, or and even shame and not like hustling so hard being pregnant, you know, and she was like, I'm so over um, burnout being like a trophy type situation sure. where it's like everyone's like, Oh, I'm so burned out. And it's like, it's not, it's not a thing to be bragging about, you know, like just be in your lane, do your thing, you know, calm down. Um, but with the thing you were talking about, Michael, with the warrior, I have a theory and I just kind of got this this weekend, but you guys know how guys brains pretty much just have like one channel. And so they're like food, sleep, you know, turn down the radio so I could drive, you know, if you're talking to me, you know, I definitely can't have the radio. Not everybody, but for the a lot of guys, um, unless they did music growing up or, you know, different kind of things with the with, to open up the pathways and for that intuition. Um, but do you do you think maybe because women have so many channels that number that maybe that's what's opening up for the empath type stuff? But on the downside of that, without my guy. I don't know what I would do because he is very like empathic, but he's very like one channel, two channel ish, maybe three. 
And so whenever I'm like, oh my God, you know, tomorrow and the next day and today and the thing he said and the thing I got to do and, and all the stuff, you know, the, you know, vacuuming and also doing a show and drinking water and cooking and, and he'll be like, dude, you know, baby, <laughs> like go to sleep or, you know, eat something. You know, I forget to eat. Like I could go like days and if Brian's out of town, you know, he'll come in and he'll like put, bring food and put it like right in front of me and go, did you eat like all week? You know, there's no dishes, there's nothing going, you know, it's like, I forgot, like I totally forget. But do you think that that brain thing has any, a crossover with the, with the energetic intuition part to you or am I making that up? I wonder. No, I, I like, I love that. Um, Cause I, I'll go long periods of time without, remember to eat as well because i just get so involved like and like you and like jay we layer so many things and and we're doing so many things at once that you you just get so so focused you, you forget everything like, oh, i got time to eat like so oh i haven't eaten like all day i can't believe that i literally haven't today at all yet and it's like oh yeah i just remember yeah, i i identify very very well with people like that i think it's i think it's fantastic um, that, that people have that ability to have that many things going on in their minds again. Because when you were saying all those things, I'm like, yep, 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 yep. I do all that stuff. Yeah, 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 you're good. <laughs> well, most people were like, what, 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 what? Uh, but yeah, so I, I love that that type of thinking. It's definitely, you know, helped me in combat situations and yeah. in real life. You know, even now, you know, I can, I'm, I'm very, very calm, but I'm like processing like at a supercomputer rate. So, uh, you know, I can... And Jay's the same. Well, James, Jay is like amazing, like reading books. I'm like, I listen to books. I don't have time to read. I don't know how Jay does the reading. And uh, he's answering emails. I, someone uh, on our show last night was like, and hey, Mike, you never answer my emails, but Jay, I can, he answers me right away. I'm like, that's right. Jay does do that. How does he do that? Because I can't do that. <laughs> I have help though. I do have help. <laughs> So how many books do you guys read at once? Because I'm usually reading like seven or eight books. At oh, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have like a, at least that many that I that I have I'm reading. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. But so, yeah, I think to get back to I'm getting, we're getting way off track, but that, that channelized, uh, you know, having all these different channels going on. Uh, women do that better than men. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm saying, and we're, we're talking about how women – you know, we're basically carrying this, you know, consciousness uh, um, realm expansion and, you know, to the next level because men are like, duh, like, <laughs> like one, two channel, please stop. That's too much. But you guys are like just boom, 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 just doing all kind of crazy stuff. And I'm like, go girl. Like, I, you know, I'm, I got you back, you know, just do it. So uh, yeah. I, I wish I could do that sometimes, but, uh, and I'm learning. That's that's what Jay and I talk about. You know, we're learning how to like, you know, let that intuitive brain like, you know, run because there's no limit to it. And when you really comprehend that, it's amazing. It's amazing what you can do. Yeah, it, that's a, that's a, that's uh, again, I'm in agreement. I mean, uh, as a masculine man, you have to learn to uh, develop and and, and uh, evolve your right brain. You know, I mean, up until I was 41 years old, I was in the left brain and reactive and an asshole and you know people that knew me called me they they literally called me f you pay me that was my nickname right so i mean i was pretty much out of touch you know i was not a consciously advanced person uh, i was very successful in the matrix but i was not who i am now today and you know my current wife monica you know i give a lot of credit to her she's definitely my greatest spiritual mentor uh has helped me so much you know develop my right intuitive brain and to become like Michael and I have become and, and, and why we're so connected to so many women now, because again, we can intuitively speak to them on the level that they would like to be spoken to. And, you know, back to your daughter and, you know, her husband, you know, it's very important today that females and males, of course, you know, choose to play the role that God gave them. And, you know, we can sit here and get into a whole, you know, philosophical debate that, you know, women and men have the same equal rights. And of course they do, but energetically, again, women have the divine creative force and the man is the, uh, you know, the opposite of the polar, the polarity where he goes out and he does things right. Mm -hmm. And achieves. And so when we recognize that both male and female play again, that equal, but opposite polarized role, it's perfectly okay 
for the man to go out and do his thing during the day and the woman to stay home and be with the kids and raise a powerful nuclear family. And again, I know that that's all broken up now today with all these different roles and, you know, gay people can raise children and vice versa and all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. But even in that situation, you know, there's usually one of the gay men is more feminine and one is more masculine. So again, you've got this whole polar, uh, you know, uh, sacred sexuality aspect of things going on and people need to be okay with that, you know? And I think that too many people today are not okay with that. And that's why they're so stuck in not developing the right brain intuition. And as Michael always says, like, you know, we can always break all this down into, are you in love or are you in fear? And yep. not having a right brain, unfortunately, sends people running to doctors asking to get the double visa. I want to get the double visa. You know, and it's like, no, dude, you can maintain your divine, sovereign, empowered freedom by not worrying about any of that stuff. But again, if you have no right brain development, you're in fear. Because as you said, Dr. Charnel, at the beginning of the show, you watch the news and you watch the news cycle on the internet and you listen to what your neighbor says and you listen to what you hear at church. And, you know, as Michael and I showed that, you know, it's already happening in churches, you know, the vaccinated sit over here and the unvaccinated over here. I mean, so again, if you allow your left brain to control your life, that's where you end up. And that's why there's so many people choosing to be controlled by the system, you know? And again, you know, we could probably end the show as Michael and I always talk about, is it, are we heading down this bifurcational path where people like us are living in communes or, you know, new systems where we build our own payment processing and create our own banks and create lands and tracts of land where we're farming. We're going to be Amish. Let's go be Amish. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, that's, that's a really great point because that's where we might all end up. The, like Jets, the Jetsons meet the Amish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I was literally thinking yesterday, I, I'm pretty, I just want to go get a flip phone and like, you know, yeah. Yeah. seriously, uh, I'm, I'm done. I mean, not done, but anyway, um, so one final question for you guys, um, before we wrap up and thank you so much for your amazing time. I know that both of you are very intuitive and I've spent decades teaching like how to hear God's voice, you know, on dreams and visions, remote viewing, you know, um, healing, you know, the technology is here. And, you know, for the last, I don't know, uh, I guess year or more, there's been a little bit more of a, a detour for me with just truthing and, you know, what was really happening and trying to get people more um, on in the know on the V and the C and all these things. I'm using codes in case <laughs> I can put this up, but, um, you know, and just as a naturopath and also just as a human, like, let's just use our common sense stuff, you know, but one of the things, you know, when we were in Vegas, I was there talking to Sean um, Stone and, you know, he, a bunch of people came over, David Rodriguez and everybody was there and they were like, you know, what's the late, cause Sean had came in late and uh, he was, someone had said like, so what's, what's everybody saying? You know, he hadn't been in any of the meetings or whatever. And, you know, everybody kind of threw around different stuff. And then when they got to me, I was like, you know, for me, I, I, I will listen. I have people on my show. I'm, you know, I like, you know, hearing what people have to say. I like diversity. I don't, you know, some people completely say different things. I'm cool with that. Um, but for me, I go within. And I want to know what God and me is saying about the situation because I have been proven over the last two decades when I've had a dream or I've heard something or I felt something or a lot of times I get something right away in the morning and I'll like hear and I'll go, oh my gosh. And it's like surprising to me. And then you can bank it happens. And some of that comes from like, you know, the Montauk stuff and some other things that, you know, um, I've we're training, you know, um, but for what, you know, the, for the sake of, of kind of where I am in this moment, um, yesterday when I'm out with that lady that I was the second lady that I was meeting with, she was sitting there and she, you know, she's the one that had her mask down and she was like, you know, call me tomorrow. I won't be there in the morning, but I'll be there this afternoon. And I literally knew instantly her mom's about to die. And it was like, I kind of not, 
I don't know if it was a herd or felt or, you know, it was definitely in her field. And so I said, yeah, I'm so sorry about your mom. Now, as soon as I said it, I was like, oh shit, because I knew she, you know, she said, she kind of gives me this, you know, she's like, how did you know about that? And I said, um, oh, well, I'm pretty sure you told me. Right. And, um, uh, and she was like, yeah, no, you didn't. I, I didn't tell you anything about that. And cause we were all like papers and, you know, things about appointments and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure I heard something about it. I'm not going to tell her. Um, maybe I should have, but she was like, if you're talking about these people and she's pointing to an office behind her full of people, she was like, they don't know anything either. You know, she's like, yeah, my mom is in hospice and I'm leaving in the morning to go to Texas in the tomorrow afternoon. And, uh, we just don't know. And then she gets teary eyed and I'm teary eyed and we get this moment and I'm able to like, you know, speak into her. And I walked away from that going, damn, like, I need to get back to that. I, I, that was just so not, not, it was sad for sure. Um, but it was like a remembrance for me of we have the technology and I need to get back into teaching more and doing more on like teaching people to go within and to, you know, forget what everyone is saying out there. But what is, what are you knowing? Because what if the internet goes down? What if we don't have cell phones? And this is what I've been saying for 20 years. You may not be able to text or call or whatever when Katrina happened, which is socially engineered and all the other stuff. But, you know, it's like we need to know what someone's thinking or what someone's going through or if they're OK or if, you know, loved one needs something or. And we do that all the time anyway, if we're aware. But it's that tuning up, um, you know, detoxing and cleaning so we're clear and that alignment and those channels are clear. But uh, I know you guys do a lot of that, too, with remote stuff. But can you speak into the importance of all of that right now in this season, especially? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the ability to uh, stay in these high consciousness vibrations, not only can you make sure you stay healthy, but if you're having problems, that's what's going to heal you by staying in the higher vibrations. Now, if you want to help other people by sending those thoughts out, uh, that's what helps them as well. So the healing energies, you know, work amazingly. We've all heard about the, like these groups that get together and pray, but a lot of times the ones that, su that are successful, the people within them know that they are powerful and they're connected to source and they send that source energy to, out. So there's the difference. There's a lot of difference in all, all of these uh, things that we're talking about. Those that are connected with the intuition, which is connection to uh, divine source. That's what we're allowing that to channel through us and uh, bring us information when we ask for it. Because we're staying in those loving vibrations, it'll communicate with us. Now, when we're in the fear, when we're in the hate, the loathing, or whatever it might be, we don't have access to that. And that's what usually brings on the dis-ease yes. and other problems. So by staying in those higher vibrational uh, uh, realms, and like you're demonstrating and have demonstrated, you, know, you start to have these super uh, human abilities come through, you know, like I talk about in all my work. And and Jay is, is talking about in his work, you know, you have, we can all be Superman and Superwoman, but not if we're in fear and hate and loathing. We'll see what I like Superman. And nice. Superman. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look. I got one of each. My initials, SW, but go ahead. Yes. Uh, right. I, I'm in total agreement with Michael. Um, without my inner work practice, in my, you know, what I call my introspection, meditation, contemplation, grounding in nature, I, I wouldn't even be able to make it today. You know, I, I, I think it's, it's critically important that everybody develop an inner work practice and you make it the focal point, you know, of your life. And, you know, whether that is waking up in the morning and going outside with your dog and just like sitting in total silence and listening to nature, because you guys know nature is God. I mean, the resonant frequency of the insects and the birds and the trees and the wind and the vibrations that are being produced in nature, that's literally the sound of God, as Michael said, divine source. That is creative power and energy and source frequency. And so just being in that regularly, it's not something where, you know, you just talk about it every now and then. It's actually doing it every single day of your life, making a, what does I call it, a ruthless focused practice a discipline that every day of your life, no matter where you are, whether you're traveling, you're on the road, you know, things happen. It's still five minutes to 20 minutes, whatever it is, but it's every day there 
Um, that's how you are able to, again, you know, kill the monkey mind, keep yourself in a position of silence and, you know, again, meditative, contemplative uh, focus, which then automatically produces this, as Michael said, because then you do become the neutral observer of your own thoughts. And when you're neutrally observational, you can be in that loving field or that high frequency field, which again, you know, is totally immune from all of this down here. But again, if you're focused on watching CNN or listening to so-and-so or going to the hospital or listening to what my doctor says, or, you know, any of that stuff, you cannot maintain the frequency that's up here. So again, I always say like, you know, what, what I said earlier on the show, you know, we can only control ourselves through our words, thoughts, and actions. So, you know, make them conscious, make them focused and make your actions massively intentional. Um, and you will always rise to the top in service to creation again. And, you know, Michael's statement of love bubbles, no matter what happens to you in the course of a day, just think love, you know, even if people cut you off or, you know, being an influencer, like all three of us are, and they leave negative comments or send you crazy messages, just delete them. Don't respond. Don't, you know, don't lower your frequency to get into their frequency. Cause as you said, Dr. Charnel, everything is the cosmic mirror. What we give off is what we reflect and what we put out is what comes back. So just constantly put out love and you are going to get love. Oh, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, any final words and definitely drop your websites and way people can connect with you. And um, yeah, we went a little bit over, so I appreciate your time, but I would let, you know, please let people know where they can find you each. You go to the. You can type this in the Optimized Tribe, and that'll pull up our links to uh, join us uh, at the Optimized Tribe. We love everybody that comes over there, uh, sharing great information like Jay was talking about. Uh, amazing people coming in. My own stuff is uh, unleashingintuition.com, and I have a YouTube channel, Michael Jaco, so uh, Facebook channel. So lots, lots of stuff I'm sharing all the time. Like three shows now today. I love it. I love connecting. Uh, amazing people, and of course I'm. You know, have clients that I talk to uh, throughout the day too. So it's uh, it's I, I'm in like the 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 space that I I wanted to be in. I prepared myself for uh, through all the trauma and all the drama that I went through in my life to be in this this particular split this space. You know, I think it's uh it's a, it's a, a fantastic place. A lot of people see you know negativity. I see like amazing coming. So that's what it is. Awesome. I mean, Thank that's, you. that's beautiful, Michael. That's why Michael and I are partnered together. We both see the same thing. It's all about the golden age, you know, Jay Campbell, raise your vibration, you know, living a fully optimized life. I mean, everything that Michael and I talk about is who we are. Okay. We espouse exactly the way we live our life. You know, there's no fakery here. There's no stagecraft. This is not like anybody meets Michael and I in person. They know exactly that the persona that they see online is who we are in real life. There's no BS. I can attest to that. Yeah. I mean, Michael and I are as authentic and as transparent as any two guys on the internet. And again, you know, anybody can come up to us and shake our hands and find that out. But, uh, you know, you can find me, obviously, Michael and I are at the optimized tribe.com. Uh, my personal website is J a Y C Campbell because somebody is cyber hawking my domain, uh, .com. Uh, and I don't do as much coaching as Michael, um, I also own a cosmeceutical peptide company, which is A-S-E-I-R custom, uh, com, which is literally, um, Michael's not actually an affiliate for us, but we have two of the most amazing facial serum and creams and then a total, uh, hair regrowth product that I've regrown my hair. I used to look like Michael, my head was like that. And so I've regrown my hair, uh, with that company, but, uh, those are the easiest wow. ways to get a hold of us. And, um, you know, I'm, Michael's almost gone. He's on Instagram. And unleashing intuition, and I'm on Twitter at JC Campbell 333. So uh, that's probably the easiest ways to get a hold of us. But thank you so much for allowing us to come on your show today, Doctor. Awesome. awesome, awesome, awesome. And I know um, I've talked to Tracy, and we're trying to set up to get on you guys' to show too. So we'll figure out when we'll nail down some things here pretty soon in the middle awesome. of all of this stuff. But um, Thank you guys very much. Thank you everybody who put in the time and hung out with us. And also everyone, please do go to swiftfire.org. If you go to swiftfire.org and get on the newsletter, then no matter where we are or what's coming up or who we got going on, then you guys know where, what to do and where we are. Um, 
this Sunday, I actually have Peter Maxwell Slatery. You guys are probably familiar with him, super soldier stuff, and real good friends with James Gillian, who you mentioned earlier. I love James so much. Been out to a city, and that's pretty. Um, he His blog that came out today, by the way, I think it was today or yesterday, I was like, whoa. I mean, he his books are just he's just an amazing person, but, um, but yeah, so Peter will be on and he has a new book. Um, so you guys don't want to miss that five o'clock Sunday, lots of stuff next week, get in touch with these guys and follow them everywhere. Cause they are having interviews and people all the time. You definitely want to connect with these guys, subscribe to all of their things and make sure you stay connected. So you know what they're doing and how to get involved and participate and get all their high vibes. But, um, Thank you again this Thursday night, you guys. Bless you from my whole heart. Love to the wives. Tell everyone I said hey and give them a big hug for me. And um, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. You guys have a good night. All Take right. Care. Love out there. Thank you. Awesome.